Today, I'm going to take you through how you can invest like a pro starting right now and I bet make more money than people who manage funds for a living. Hello, my name is Nima and if you don't know me, I'm your person if you want to know the facts about money and life for women. Now, I have been badly burned by investing in things like funds, private equity, all sorts of things. One day I'll take you through my various stories, but for now I want you to know this. If I had my time again, this, the stuff I'm sharing with you today, is the only thing I would do. So let's get started. By the end of this video, you will know what an index fund is, who Vanguard is and why I like them, how to buy Vanguard index funds and a few things that are related to this. Plus, I'm going to be sharing the one fund that I think is the only fund you will ever need to invest in if you invest in only one fund. And you're going to be discovering the horrifying truth about how stock market gains happen. It's not what you think. Basically, by the end of this video, you will have everything that you need to start investing and building a world-class portfolio right now. Let's dive in. Maybe you have wanted to invest in stocks and shares for a long time, but you've been put off by the idea of where to start, how to start, what stocks to pick, how to go about it. And if you add that to everything else that you have to do in a single day, I'm not surprised that you've parked it, not done a thing, and perhaps you're putting your money back in your knicker drawer as somebody I know really does. Well, before you do that, stick around, give me a few minutes of your time, and let's take stock. Where to put your hard-earned cash is a very important, difficult decision. You want to make sure that it's the right decision, that it is safe, that you are going to be secure in the future. By the way, if this sort of thing interests you, then please hit subscribe and the bell. Now, what do you want? My guess is you want to feel confident and comfortable deciding where to put your money and you want to make money. Today, I'm talking about one of the tools that takes the headache out of all of the decision-making and that gives you better returns than humans making decisions. Index funds. What are they and why should you care? Let's take a step back. Let's look at investing in stocks and shares. There are two ways you can do this. You can either invest in individual shares, you handpick, you do your research, due diligence, understand the markets, the companies, the outlook, all sorts of things, and you make a decision and you part with your cash. This is the way you get the most control over where your cash goes, but it's also the biggest headache, the biggest risk too, because you're counting on that one company doing really, really well. But global pandemics aside, you will be horrified to know how markets make their money and that this approach, investing in one stock, is the worst thing you can do. You want to spread your risk, so you want to buy into more than one company. Why? Because if something bad happens with that one company, you want to know that your money is working for you somewhere else. So you might think, okay, so the solution is that you invest in more than one company, more than one industry. Maybe you say you're going to look at tech stock, uh, banks, engineering, different countries around the world. Okay, what you're doing there is spreading the risk, yes, but you're taking on a lot more headache. After doing your initial research and making those decisions, you have to stay on top of all of this, which means managing your investments. And that can be very challenging for people who've got a lot of things going on in their life. Do you have space for this mentally, emotionally? I don't. And my guess is that if you're watching this, then you don't either. Then again, you might have all the time in the world. And so my question to you is, do you understand all of this? Do you understand everything that's involved? And in fact, I don't think anybody really does. Mm, although maybe these guys do. Did you know that chimpanzees investing in stocks randomly can easily beat the pros? Now, there have been many studies along these lines where professionals are pitted against people who pick stocks at random. One way was just throwing darts at the board. The board had different industries and stocks and shares and company names on it. And guess who won the game of return on investment? My point is that if the professionals get it wrong, what are the chances that you are going to get it right? We're sold this story, this idea. I mean, just look at this headline. These are the sorts of returns we're told about and that we really want. I mean, when you see this 10% annualized return on average, you say, give it to me, let me buy. Where do I sign? Take my money, right? But before you do that, know this. That headline refers to the S&P 500 index. You will hear a lot about the S&P 500 if you're interested in this sort of thing because the S&P 500 is considered to be a barometer for how well 
the American economy is doing. It's made up of the largest 500 US companies. And yes, average stock market returns are good, especially if you look at it over a series of a few years. But what is it based on? And this is really, really important for you to know. These returns are based on a minutely small number of companies doing really, really well. Do you want to know how many? 4% if you're in the USA. That's right. Stock market returns in the USA, and this is based on a study over 90 years of 26 thousand companies by Hendrik Bissenbinder, who found that these lovely returns, that the gains are the result of 4% of the stocks doing tremendously well, while most of them lose you money. So this is in the USA. What about the rest of the world? Well, Bissenbinder did another study and found that globally, the returns, the gains are based on 1% of the companies listed doing astronomically well. So that literally they carry the rest of the stock market with them. So here's the headline. Most stocks are flops and will lose you money. So the question is, do you want to take on that risk? Do you want to be responsible for trying to pick the 4% that'll make you money in the USA market and the 1% globally? So what's the solution? Well, the solution is diversification. What does it mean? It means that you buy into many, many hundreds of companies. It could be across many, many industries. It could be across the globe. Remember, I am not a financial advisor. I'm a journalist who has written about money and life and this sort of thing for decades. My job is to provide you with the facts, the information. You make the right decision for you. Deal? So here's what I look for, and I suggest that you look into this too. I want a tool that spreads my risk and that takes away headache. The headache of monitoring, checking, rejigging. So that if something bad is happening in one industry, in one part of the world, then hopefully something good is happening somewhere else. And by the way, global exposure is the talk of the investment community right now. So it's the way to go as far as they're concerned. This is where funds come to the rescue. Funds are ready-made baskets of companies, which means that you are diversified straight away. Now, there are many types of funds, and I'm going to drill down to one type, index funds. You might have come across the terms ETF, passive fund, tracker fund. These are all names for index funds. An index is a group of companies that come together because they fit certain criteria. The S&P 500 is made up of the largest 500 companies in the USA. And I'm sure you recognize some of these global giants. So if you buy one share of the S&P 500, you end up owning a tiny, tiny part of Tesla, a tiny, tiny part of Apple, a tiny, tiny part of PayPal. Now imagine what it would feel like to own these giants and what it would feel like to say to people, hey, I invest in these. S&P stands for Standard & Poor's, which is the company that gets to decide which companies get to be on the list and stay on the list. An index based on the FTSE 100 gives you access to the top 100 companies in the United Kingdom. And there are loads of different types of funds. There are some crazy ones out there and some very niche ones, things like Drones, investing in drones, investing in the future of internet access in China, investing in breakfast. This one invests in agriculture and bacon. So if you're interested in a very specific sector, an index fund is a great way to get exposure without having to do tons of research about each and every company. As well as getting access to all of the companies listed in the index, you get to pay very low fees because index funds are managed by computers. Now you can choose a fund that's run by humans. These are mutual funds and it's where a fund manager gets to choose and pick stocks and companies and they don't have to all belong to the same basket. Now if you're considering this, check this headline out. No actively managed stock or bond funds outperformed the market convincingly and regularly over the last five years. Index funds have generally been better. Now, of course, every year, some investors do outperform the market. They do extremely well, but do they do it regularly, consistently, and do you want to take that risk? To recap, you can invest in stocks and shares three ways. The DIY method, you handpick, you do your research, you take it all on, you do it. Then there's the mutual fund approach, a fund that's managed by a person. These are expensive, and guess what? They don't always do as well as the third option, 
index funds managed by a computer. It's a basket of companies that are together because they fit certain criteria and you can access them by buying into the index. Remember, only 4% of companies listed in the USA accounted for the wonderful returns that the markets have had for years. And only 1% of companies listed in stock markets globally account for the growth of global stock markets. Do you feel confident enough to pick which ones? I don't. For me, there's one option that wins hands down. Yes, index funds. They are the easiest to set up and the easiest to manage. And they make you the most money. How can you invest in an index fund? You can either go through a brokerage firm or you can invest directly in an index fund through an index fund provider like Vanguard. Now, I have a bias towards Vanguard. They are not the only good index fund provider. I've written about them for years. Here's an example of one of my headlines many moons ago. Today they are the second largest fund manager in the world with $8.1 trillion under management. So why do I like Vanguard so much? Well, it's a mix of the person who founded Vanguard, Jack Bogle, how they operate and what they offer. So Jack Bogle, he's credited with inventing this industry, the index fund industry. And this is what Warren Buffett has to say about him. Jack Bogle did more for the individual investor than anyone he's ever known. Jack Bogle created a revolution for people like me and you. Because of him, we have this wonderful exposure, the spreading of risk, the hassle-free approach and the very, very low fees. How can you be part of this? How can you build an investment portfolio that you don't lose sleep over? Well, you could invest directly with Vanguard. You could go via an investment app or platform or through a broker. If you do go this route, the brokerage route, then it can get very expensive. So check all the fees involved and make an informed decision. Now, there are two types of Vanguard funds that I want to point out, accumulation and distribution. This is about what happens with dividends that are paid out. So the companies that you've invested in, they make profits, they share them with stakeholders. If you buy into an accumulation fund, then those dividends go back into the investment pot. You don't need to worry or think or do anything. The money you've made is now making you more money. If you go for the distribution fund, then the dividends are distributed. They're given out to you. You have access to that money. My personal thinking is that if you don't need the money to live off, so the dividends, you don't need them to pay for your life, then go for the accumulation fund. There are many different types of funds. And because of what's going on globally, the investment community is saying that global exposure is the way to go. And guess what? Vanguard has you covered. So this is a different type of fund, a fund that gives you that global exposure. It says what it does on the tin. It's the global equity fund. And at the time of recording this video, this fund was invested in 189 companies from around the world. If you invest in this one fund, you get global exposure, but you're still invested in one type of thing in stocks, equities. Now, this is considered to be a risk level five. Vanguard has risk one to seven, one being the lowest, seven being the highest. And this is a five because you're still invested in one type of thing, stocks. So how do you spread your risk? Well, you invest in bonds. Bonds are important because the idea is that when stocks and shares are doing badly, bonds do okay. And the thinking is that we should increase our allocation of bonds as we grow older. And guess who takes the headache out of all of this with just one fund? Vanguard, again, they have a fund called Life Strategy, and you can decide which mix of stocks and shares to bonds you have as you go through the phases of life. If you look on the right-hand side, you've got the 100% equities, high risk, long-term outlook. The idea is that when you're younger building, that's what you want to be going for. And then towards the far left, you've got a very small exposure to stocks and shares, 20%, and the rest is bonds because you want to have low risk and it's a shorter term outlook. And so this really is the only fund you will ever need to invest in if you only invest in one fund. Now, I'm going to be diving into the life strategy fund in another video. If this is interesting, if you want to know more, then hit subscribe and the bell so that you know when it goes live. If you liked this video, you're gonna love the next one. Bye for now.